today I'm going to go through the process of setting up, configuring, and isolating a guest network on my ASUS RT-AC86U router powered by Merlin. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to set up the guest network. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to be using a feature called Smart Connect, which allows you your device, if it uses a 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, it would connect to the appropriate um, SSID seamlessly. So first of all, we are going to enable guest network. So you select guest network from your main menu and you have two options. You have the 2.4 gigahertz band or the 5 gigahertz band. So first of all, we're going to enable the 2.4 gigahertz band. To set up Smart Connect, what we're going to do is we're going to set up both SSID with the same name. That allows easy transition between both SSIDs. Okay, so I'm going to enable the 5 gigahertz. Now we're going to configure each SSID separately, but we're going to configure them identically. Okay, so to configure the 2.4 gigahertz we're going to click on the option first of all we want to make sure that the SSID is not hidden we would change the SSID name so I am going to give it okay so we're going to give it DIY tech tip underscore guest authentication method we're going to change it because we want to make sure that it's secure we're going to change the options we have is open system WPA2 personal and WPA auto personal the most secure um, authentication method currently is WPA2 the encryption we're going to be using AES which is the only option and just for testing purpose, we're going to make our pre-shared key uh, very simple. <laughs> As you can see, I would not recommend um, using this sort of uh, uh, pre-shared key. Um, it is recommended to use a paraphrase for your pre-shared key. Next, we're going to set up access time. You can do two options. You can have unlimited access. So the SSID would remain um, on and it can be discoverable, unlimited, or you can specify a specific time, access time. So you have the option of how many days, you can use hours or you can use minutes. Once that is expired, then the SSID would be disabled automatically. So for now, we're going to leave it unlimited. Bandwidth limiter, um, I have it as the default is no, but you can set a bandwidth limit. Um, you can select the amount of megabits per second that can be downloaded through that SSID as well as the upload bandwidth. This is great if you have people that come over to your home and you do not want them to maximize or utilize your entire bandwidth. So you can basically use that to limit the amount of bandwidth that is given to that specific SSID. Um, once you do that, it actually turns on um, QoS Service Manager and it sets it to bandwidth limiter mode. But for now, we're going to select no because we don't want that on. The next option is access intranet. What this is doing, um, by default, it is set to disable. It will not allow anyone that connect to this specific SSID, they will not have access to your actual wireless connection or your network. So they would not be able to 
access your internal network. They would be able to access the internet, but it would be blocked from accessing any device, any devices on your current network. So we're going to leave that as disabled. Um, if you select enable, I would show you what happens. It actually would give you an IP address on your current network. But since we have it disabled, it's going to set up an isolated subnet for that guest network only. The next option we're going to select is guest network on AI mesh. The default is for the router only. If you have AI mesh set up within your network, it is recommended that you select all AI mesh nodes. So this SSID would be available throughout the entire AI mesh network. But for now, we only have one router, so we're going to use router only. And the last option is enable MAC filtering. MAC filtering allows you to either accept or reject any device that you would like to um, specify have access to your network. Um, this is if you have very limited um, people visiting your home, but it can get quite out of control if uh, a lot of people visit your home and actually use your Wi-Fi network, your guest network. And the maximum limit is 16. So I would recommend uh, leaving that as disabled. By having a very strong pre-shared key, it would allow um, you to control who actually connects to your Wi-Fi. Okay, we're going to select Apply. I am going to go through the same settings and configure the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band so that we'll make it uh, similar. Okay, so we we'll go to the 5 gigahertz and we would select change the name. We would make it the same name. This allows Smart Connect so that it would use either one of the the channels. Okay, same AES. Uh, we're going to use welcome one, unlimited, no, and uh, we're going to disable access our intranet, router only, and disable. So what I'm going to do now is that I am going to connect another device to that particular SSID. And we're going to verify that it actually connects to the guest network. To do that, we would select system log. And we would go to wireless log. This would show any device that is currently connected to any of the Wi-Fi connections. So I am just connecting right now. As you can see, I am using a device that automatically connects to our 5 gigahertz. As you can see, the IP address is 192.168.102.22, which is totally different from our current network IP address range, which is 192.168.50.1. So to test that we are we were not able to actually connect to this device or this device do not have access to any devices on the 192.168.50.1 network. I am going to try to ping that particular IP address. As you can see, there is no connection. So from my device, which I am currently on, which is on the 192.168.50 subnet, cannot access this device. So we're going to test and verify that if we change the connection and we allow it to have access, we're going to validate that you can actually ping the device. So we're going to go back to a guest network. And we're going to edit both 
SSID. Going to say enable intranet and apply. And we're going to do the same to our five gigahertz network. The reason why the device connected to the five gigahertz network is because the device actually would prefer a faster connection. So with Smart Connect, this is done automatically on the ASUS router. Okay, so I'm just gonna enable that option now. And then we're gonna try to reconnect to our guest network and I'm going to try to issue a ping to that network to see if we can actually get connected. So I'm gonna go all the way back to system log to verify that our device get connected. I'm just going to turn it off and back on again. So it's disconnected. And I'm just going to verify that it gets connected. And as you see, it gets a different IP address, 192.168.50.22, which is the same IP subnet that we're currently connected to. So to validate that this device can access our internal network, I am just going to ping that device. As you can see here, the previous IP address the device got was 192.168.102.22. So I'm going to ping that device now. And as you can see, it gets connected. I'm getting response. The last test we're going to do is that I am going to disable the wireless 5G network on my router on the guest and device should automatically be connected to the 2.4 gigahertz connection. So automatically my device would get disconnected and it would get connected to the 2.4 gigahertz connection. And it should still get an IP address of 192.168.50.22. So as you can see, the 2.4 gigahertz connection is up. We'll go to system logs, wireless logs. And as you can see, it's switch over and it connected to the 2.4. This is what Smart Connect does. So if you have a 5G, 5 gigahertz connection, SSID, and you go out of range of the 5 gigahertz, and once it still sees the 2.4 gigahertz network, it will automatically connect to it. So let's try that ping again. And as you can see, it gets connected still. Okay. And that is all for this video and how to set up a guest network and to isolate it from your actual home internal network. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in another video in our series on how to set up the ASUS RT-AC86U router powered by Berlin.